How's everybody tonight? How you blessed and highly flavored? How you anointed and appointed? It's a good day to die, isn't it? Amen. Amen. Good day to die to yourself. Oh, glory. How many of y'all know we're in the last days? If you don't, you don't know. If you couldn't tell that all the stuff that's going on, all the things that are happening in the world, we are end time. You're not here by coincidence. God sent you. You may try to figure out how he sent you. You may have reason why he sent you. But you're here to be trained up. We are not doing Bible studies. We do training sessions. This, Jesus is an end time warrior for the kingdom. Amen? He came to prepare. He's the military and the commander and the chief of eternity. The earth was lost. Jesus came to restore it and give it back to his people. It's been taken by lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life. It's been taken by deception, fear. It's been taken. And people have been taken up in it, taken captive. I was one. Many years. Till Jesus came. Still blows me away. Who would ever thunk? Not my wife. <laughs> me either. <laughs> Hallelujah. But God is raising up end time warriors for such a time as this. Rescuing people that thought we could never get rescued. You are entering another dimension. You're entering a time and season where you're not going to be able to figure it all out. You're going to have to trust it out. Does everybody understand? You're going to have to trust that God is in control if you allow him to have the last say. If you don't allow him to have say, then you're in control, and that many enemies using you. Amen? Now remember, we don't fight flesh and blood. We're fighting powers of darkness, wickedness in many places. We're fighting demonic demons. People they call diseases are actually demons. They call addiction a disease. No, it's a demon. It is an evil spirit that has possessed people. Homosexuals, lesbians, and transgenders are demons and individuals. They were not born that way. They entered that. 2 Peter chapter 3. That's why God has given us the keys of the kingdom. That's to bind and loose and to what? Remove demons. Amen? Oh, happy days. 2 Peter chapter 3. The Bible, basic instructions before leaving earth, right? <laughs> It's amazing, I never believed the Bible until the Lord told me that it was true. <laughs> I didn't want any stories. I wanted truth. Amen. I had enough stories. Many people have been deceived and they just passed that tradition down to others. And then we received it. After my visitation from the Lord, I realized I've been lied to my whole life. Not because they meant it, but because they believed the lie. My parents, some of the preachers, everything else. I couldn't, I'm like, whoa, been lied to. Didn't know I could truly be a son of God. Not the son of God, a son. Amen. Amen. Didn't realize I could have a relationship with the one who created all things. Now, anywhere I go, my dad owns it. Man, get out of my parking place. That's out. That's my father owns this parking place. <laughs> Officer, you can't write that ticket. <laughs> my dad owns that ticket. Good, he can pay for it. <laughs> he will. Second Peter chapter three, verse one. 
Let's speak it together. Beloved, I now write to you this second epistle in both of which I, to stir up your what? Pure your pure minds. Hello, that means that there's two minds. There's a pure one and an unpure. Amen? The old man is not pure. That's where the battle is. What thoughts are you going to allow and what voice are you going to allow to rule your temple? Stir up your pure minds by way of reminder. So he says, man, i got to remind you of these things. That you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy apostles under the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, this first, this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts. Scoffers, mockers, followers, Following the, not following the word of God. Amen? Not submitting to the things of God. They will follow their own dictates of their own heart. They're called scoffers. Walking according to their own loss or their own desires. Their own desires. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willfully forget, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of water and in the water, by which the world that, been, that then existed perished, being flooded with water. But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, a reserve for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, do not forget this one thing that with the Lord one day is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises. Some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to what? Repentance against scoffers and mockers not following the word of God, not accepting the conviction of the Holy Spirit. They are walking according to their own emotional desires. They are survivalists and protectors of self. This is what we're finding in the last days. There are end time thieves. Everyone say thieves. There's thieves and robbers. Amen. The Lord said here it's powerful because he's talking about a scoffer that is actually a thief. It's a mocker. They're scornful. These are spirits that are influencing individuals. In Psalm 1. End time thieves. Thieves. In Psalm 1, starting at verse 1. Everyone say blessed. What's the opposite of blessed? Curse. Okay. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the what? Scornful, mocker, scoffer. But his delight is in the truth or in the law of the Lord. And in his law or his word, he meditates day and night. In other words, he wants to make sure that he's aligned with it. So he meditates on it. Verse 3, he shall be like a what? A tree planted by the rivers of water, refreshed, joyful, energized, that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf shall not wither, but whatever he does shall what? Prosper. It's going to turn to the good. The ungodly or rebellious are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment or the reward nor the sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall what? Perish. In Philippians 3. Philippians 3. Scornful, mockers. Robbers and thieves. In verse 17. 
Philippians 3.17. Would you speak it with me? Brethren, join in, my, in following my example and note those who walk as you have us for a what? A pattern. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who set their mind on what? Earthly things. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. He's talking about mockers, scornful, self-glory and shame, robbing from God by setting their minds on earthly things. In John chapter 10, but God says he will not be mocked. Nobody gets away with it. Although many people think that they are getting away with it, but they won't. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John 10, verse 1. End time thieves. Is everybody there? Verse 1. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up another way, the same is as a what? Thief and a what? Robber. There's many doctrines of demons and false religions that are trying to bring people up another way. Amen? He calls them thieves and robbers. But he who enters by the door is the, sh uh, is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them and when he brings them out brings out his own sheep he goes before them and the sheep do what follow him for they know his voice let me tell you how desperately important it is to know his voice know his unction desperate why? Because the enemy is trying to steal, kill, and destroy. And people are allowing it by not knowing the voice of God. Verse 5, yet they will by no means follow a stranger. So a sheep does not follow the stranger. A goat does. But will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of the stranger. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Then Jesus said to them again, And most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Now wait a minute. I want you to grab hold of something. He said, All those that came before me. Well, the word tells us that the fallen angels took on women, had sex with them, he had offsprings, produced Nephilim, that produced demons. Does everybody understand it? So there are doctrines of demons, seductive, seducing spirits, and false religions that were before Jesus. Does everybody get it? And they've come to steal, kill, and destroy. These are considered thieves and robbers. These are spirits that are influencing individuals. In verse 9, he said, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Whoa. Verse 10. The thief does not what? Come except to what? Steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it what? More abundantly. Again, thieves and robbers came before him. Many will, will offer false salvation and some of them won't offer any salvation at all, but they'll offer promises, you know, like free health care, you know, free education. They're going to offer all kinds of stuff to try and get your vote. <laughs> but the sheep 
will not follow their voice. They will follow the Spirit. Goats will reject the leading of the Spirit. Amen? They reject conviction. They reject truth. Again, these thieves came before him. They were Nephilim's offsprings, demonic influence, to lie, to cheat, to steal. Only those who follow will escape the deception that they're offering these days. Life of the eternal and abundance of revelations, abundance of fellowship, abundance of freedom, and abundance of blessings of what God offers. You know, the word tells us that when he blesses us, his blessings are not burdensome. Amen? Because it comes from him. But we must be careful, especially in these last days. We are in end times. Things are different. The world is not the same the way it used to be. It's different. Influence is different. It's more deceptive. It's more cunning. It's more destructive. It's more evil. And the word tells us that many will fall from the what? Faith. Taking heed to what? Doctrines of demons and evil spirits. They will fall from the faith. It doesn't mean they won't say they won't, that Jesus isn't their Lord. They will fall and be disconnected, thinking they're still doing the things of God until their last breath comes up and they get before him when he says, you, you ain't coming in here. 1 Corinthians 6. There's going to be a lot of butt-butt ministry at the thrown at the gates. But, but. Then he'll bring out the book of remembrance. You might have forgotten, but he don't. Do you remember this? 1 Corinthians 6, verse 7. Remember, the devil comes to steal, kill, and what? Destroy. In other words, there's end-time thieves. There's end-time robbers. Verse 7, now therefore, is everybody okay? Are you there? Now therefore, it is already an utter failure for you that you go to law against one another. Why do you not rather accept wrong? Why do you not rather let yourselves be cheated? No, you yourselves do wrong and cheat, and you do these things to your brethren. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetousness, which is associated with greed, nor drunkards, nor revelries, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus by the Spirit of our God. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of anything. Foods for the stomach and stomach for foods, but God will destroy both it and them. Now, the body is not for sexual immorality but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And God both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. <laughs> Do you not know that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, become, shall become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is what? One spirit with him. When you are joined to the Lord, we are one spirit. He said, joined to a harlot, one who worships self, worships money, worships idol, worships their own opinion. They worship the things of the world. They are joined to the world and not joined to the spirit. God is not first. Matthew Oh, hallelujah, it looks like 21. Glory. It's 
So he's talking about us as a temple. Amen? Matthew 21, verse 12. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. And he said to them, it is written, my house. In other words, my temple. Verse 12. Matthew 21. Okay, then Jesus went into the temple. Amen. Jesus went into the temple of God. Are you the temple of God? Amen. Well, he came into you then, right? Amen. That means he's going to kick over the tables and kick everything out if you let him. Then Jesus went to the temple of God and drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a what? A house of what? Prayer. Prayer. But you have made it a den of thieves. You have made it a what? Den of thieves. Wow. Why? Because they've opened themselves up to the spirits that come to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. My temple, this our temple, is supposed to be a house of prayer. It is not supposed to be made of a den of thieves. And how does it become a den of thieves? By opening doors to demonic influence. Amen? Demonic influence. And again, we are in the end times. In Galatians chapter 2. When these spirits come in, they call, not only do they come to come, they come to steal, kill, and destroy from us, but then they use us to rob God. Galatians chapter 2. Oh, happy days. One of the things I love to do is rob God from his glory, rob him from his praise, rob him from his worship. That's why he says, forsake not to assemble. Think about how many times we rob God till we know the truth. But now that we know the truth, we are very accountable. Christians still robbing God. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 1. Let's speak it together. Then after 14 years, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and also took Titus with me. And I went up by what? Revelation. And communicated to them the gospel which I preached among the Gentiles, but privately to those who were of reputation, lest by any means I might run or had run in vain. Yet not even Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. And this occurred because of the false brethren secretly brought in who came in by what? Stealth. Stealth. What word do you see in that word stealth? Steal. So they came to steal, didn't they? Their liberty, their freedom by causing them to rob God who came in by stealth to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into what? Bondage. To whom we did not yield submission even for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Hmm. Very powerful. Stealth meaning steal, steal the truth. Because remember he was talking about going out to re-preaching the gospel. They were, they were to always tried, uh, the powers of darkness always tried to prevent him from preaching the gospel. Then the word tells us that the devil comes to what? Steal the seed. Amen. Amen. Comes to steal the truth by not following. So he steals the truth from his, God's people by not following and obeying the truth. Listen, if we're not following and obeying the truth, if we're not aligning ourselves up with the word of God says then we're stealing from him. We're robbing him. 
in Malachi 3. Oh, happy days. Malachi 3, in verse 8. Is everybody there? Will a man what? Rob God. Rob God. Many people think, well, how can you rob God? Well, we rob him all the People are robbing him all the time from his time, his presence, praise. They're robbing him from truth. They're robbing him. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. Tithes and offerings. Tithes and offerings. That's a real simple thing. Tithes and offerings. Tithes is 10%. Offerings is be above that. Amen? He said, you've robbed me of my tithes and offerings. He says something very important here. Hmm. Everybody okay? Oh, happy days. What does he say? You are what? Cursed with a curse. For you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food for my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. So if you're going to cheat God from his tithes, you think the windows of heaven are going to open? No. You're going to receive a curse and everything that was blessed will be cursed. It's just a matter of time. Verse 11. He says, if you do this and you obey me, Look at this. I'll pour out for you such blessing that there will not be enough to receive it. And I will what? Rebuke the devourer. In other words, it will be protected. How many of y'all want your finances protected? Well, then you better tithe. It's real simple. Either that or you're going to rob God and you're going to be cursed. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations will call you what? Blessed. Other than that, they're going to call you cursed eventually. For you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of what? Says the Lord of hosts. Powerful. Last day thieves and robbers, stealing his money, stealing his time, stealing his truth, and causing to steal his people. Amen? Remember, tithe is 10%. Offerings is above that. Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3, verse 5. That's why he's, he's requiring us to take time with him. Amen? Amen? Seek ye the kingdom. Every morning early will I seek you. Take time. You know why people make stupid decisions? Because they're not, they're not taking time with God. They're robbing God of his time. They're robbing him of his worship. They're robbing him. And don't even know it. Proverbs 3, verse 5. Let's speak it. Trust in the Lord with what? All of your heart. All of your heart. Let me tell you what a, a, a robbing from God is. is not giving him your whole, whole heart. People are still holding back their heart. They're not sold out yet. They're not truly kingdom business. They're not kingdom bound yet. They're still living for themselves. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your what? Own understanding or your own desires. In all of your ways, what? Acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. That doesn't mean, okay, Lord, lead me. The word says, seek, and you will what? Find. Knock, and the what? Door will be open. But before that, he says, ask. So there will be an asking and seeking and a knocking. It always goes that way. He doesn't always answer you like this. 
First of all, he always wants to know what you're going to do. He doesn't answer you right away. Lord, what do I do? Usually it's dead silence. You know why he wants to know whether you're going to wait for him to speak to you? Or you're going to get counsel? Or you're going to just do it on your own? He always waits to know what his children are going to do. Why? Because the greatest desire of the Father is that you see the things he sees. You think the way he thinks. Not that we can think like God, God, God. But he's given us enough, amen? So that we make decisions and learn how to wait on him. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will what? Direct your paths. If you'll just wait. Verse 7, don't be wise in your own eyes. Hello. In other words, <laughs> don't promote your own opinions, man. <laughs> Don't rely on your own opinion. Well, this is just how, you know what most people's opinions are? How they feel. Yeah. Why well, just feel this? This is my opinion. Well, what's God's opinion? Come on, we see it all over the world. All politicians, everybody's speaking their own opinions. What's God saying to you? They can't tell you because they're not seekers. They're thieves and they're robbers. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and what? Depart from deception. Depart from evil. It will be what? Health to your flesh and strength to your bones. How many of y'all want to be healed? Hello? That's why sometimes healing doesn't come to an individual. Verse 9, what's it say? Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all of your what? increase. Why? So your bounds will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. So many people are thinking about today. Not realizing that what they're doing today is going to affect them in the future. Nobody gets away with it. Nobody gets away with stealing from God. Verse 11. My son don't despise chastening the Lord nor detest his correction or conviction. For whom the Lord loves he what? He corrects just as a father, the son in whom he delights. Happy is the man who finds wisdom. Hello, how many of y'all know we need wisdom? You know what wisdom does? Tells us what to do. Now, worldly wisdom depends on self. Tells you what to do to promote you and best feel best for you, for your pleasures. But wisdom above, it promotes the kingdom business. There's a difference. Happy is the man who finds wisdom from above. And the man, the man who gains understanding. For her proceeds are better than the profits of silver. And her gain than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies and all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. Length of days is in her right hand. And in her left hand, riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness. And in all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her, and happy are all who retain her. Trust, complete with all your heart. Don't lean on your own desires. Get his counsel confirmed. Fear the Lord and depart from thieves and robbers of God. It will bring healing to your body, strength to the bones. Honor him with your possessions and first fruit. Your reward will be plenty. Amen. You will gain more anointing. Seek conviction for yourself. Seek it. Lord, am I doing the right thing? Am I doing the right thing? I've been blessed with something. What am I going to do with it? Make sure it's kingdom business. Allow correction. And he's going to allow you access to the riches of his wisdom. And then never let go. You know, think about how many people have won the lottery. You know, they had a statistic on that. It was like almost every single one of them, but like it was like 90-something percent of them lost it all or ended up dead. Think about that. Lost it all or ended up dead. Why? Because they weren't about kingdom business. They were about self-business. Amen? 
You think they tithed that lottery? Remember we talked about Ananias and Sapphira? Amen. It was probably the, the largest tithe day the body of Christ ever had. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 16. Isaiah 1, verse 16. Is everybody okay? We got to have the wisdom, don't we? We got to have the understanding. Things are happening all over. Isaiah 1, verse 16. What does it say? Wash yourselves. Make yourselves what? Clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before your eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rebuke the oppressor. Defend the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you are willing, I'll be concerned, willing and what? Obedient. obedient. If you're willing and obedient, willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the... In other words, if you're submissive to the things and parallel yourself with what God is saying, align yourself up, you're going to eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Wow. How the faithful city has become a harlot. It was full of justice, righteousness lodged in it, but now murderers. Your silver has become dross, your wine mixed with water, your princes are rebellious and companions of thieves. Everyone loves bribes and follows after rewards. They do not defend the fatherless, nor does the cause of the widow come before them. Therefore the Lord says, the Lord of hosts, the, the mighty one of Israel, uh, I will rid myself of my adversaries and take vengeance on my enemies. I will turn my hand against you and thoroughly purge away your dross and take away all your aloe. I will restore your judges is at the first. How many of y'all know judges are being restored right now? all over. God is using Trump to put in judges and remove many of them. I mean, come on. We finally won our case in the Ninth Circuit Court. And the case was that he does not have to give money to sanctuary cities anymore. That's powerful. Why? Because he got a judge in there. A righteous judge. These are righteous judges putting in office. Amen? And removing the wicked ones. I'll restore your judges as at the first and your counselors as at the beginning. Afterward, you shall be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. Wow. So we must be willing to submit and follow. He says, man, you're going to eat the good pleasures, the blessings. One of the greatest blessings that you and I can have is sweet fellowship with his spirit. Sweet fellowship. There isn't anything that you can buy. There isn't anything greater than the sweet fellowship of his presence. Nothing greater. There isn't a drug. There isn't enough money. There isn't enough material. There's not the best car. There isn't anything that can replace the sweet presence and fellowship of him. 1 Peter chapter 1. We see all of this influenced by media, music, education, Hollywood, political. You know, it's pretty wild. Trump exposed four wicked women in the Democratic Party that are anti-Christ and anti-American. 
And so the house of thieves called the Democrat, they put a petition in and, and voted on condemning what he said. Like it's going to do anything. I mean, it is so wicked. It's so evil. Things are so exposed. It's incredible. And if anybody can't see this, they're truly blinded. And they're going to fall in such delusion and deception. And God is using them, the devil is using them, to rob God. To rob him of everything. But it doesn't matter. He's got the last say. Amen? He's got the last say. First Peter chapter 1. Nobody gets away with it. 1 Peter 1, verse 3. Is everybody there? Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God, through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith be in much more prescience than what? Gold. Gold that perishes. Though it is tested by fire, may be found to the praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Very powerful. Whom having not seen you love, though you, now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy unexpressibly and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Of this salvation the prophets have inquired and searched carefully, who prophesied of the grace that would come to you, searching out or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. Verse 12. To them it was revealed that not to themselves, but to us, they were ministering the things which were now have been reported to you through those who have been preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things which angels desire to look into. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lusts as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all of your conduct, because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. Many will rob God of his reward. His reward. Now I want to tell you who, what is his reward. We are. See, when we allow the enemy to use us from robbing God, the enemy is robbing, us, robbing him from us. Amen? We are his reward. We are his inheritance. When people stop getting their eyes off of themselves and their personal kingdom and start getting it on kingdom business and realize that we are his reward. What an honor that is. That's why it says work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, reverence and honor and respect, aligning ourselves with what he says, not what we feel, think, or assume. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 16, End time thieves and robbers. Malachi three sixteen. Is everybody there? Yeah. Let's speak it together. And those who feared the Lord spoke to one another. And the Lord listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him for those who feared the Lord and who meditated on his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, 
on the day that I make them what? My jewels. And I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked and between the one who serves God and the one who does not serve him. That's one who serves God or serves self. We are will be his jewels. We are his reward. Amen. Second Peter chapter 3. You know, one of the things the devil comes to first steal is your identity. If he can steal your identity, he can steal the rest. Amen? People lose sight of who they are in Christ. They actually sell it. Remember, Esau sold his what? Birthright. People are selling things and not even knowing it. They're robbing God. Second Peter chapter 3. Robbing of his time, his praise, his glory, his power. Robbing him. In verse 14, Second Peter, are we in Second Peter? Amen. Chapter 3, verse 14, let's speak it together. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace without spot and blameless. And consider that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, has written to you. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction as they do also the rest of the scriptures. You therefore, beloved, since you know these beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked. But grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and to him be both now and forever. Amen and amen. Again, many people have robbed God of his reward by selling their souls out for fame and wealth. Amen? Temporary fulfillment. Losing the sight of eternal fulfillment. You know, when we fall into these areas, we got to speak it. Lord, you're my fulfillment. Let me tell you, as you begin to speak that more, then nothing else is your fulfillment. Nothing. Lord, you're my fulfillment. You're my fulfillment. And that's what he asks us. Who's your fulfillment? When he said to them, who did they say that I am? He was looking for someone to find out, am I your fulfillment? Is your job your fulfillment? Is your children, your spouse, is your money, is your talents, your abilities? Or am I your fulfillment? Amen? Be careful and use wisdom because they lurk to try and cause us to rob God and the end result is they rob him of his reward, which is us. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. We ask that you protect the seed that's been imparted. We welcome your counsel, correction, direction, and conviction of all the things we've robbed you from in all of our life, Lord. Yet you've given us another opportunity to make amends, get things right, put things in order. So, Lord, I pray for each and every one here today that they will have the discernment and wisdom so that we can walk this thing out, totally surrendered our heart to you, being about Father's business and not our own, knowing that all things will be added to those who seek you and your righteousness. In Jesus' name. Nobody said amen? amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory. <laughs>